Alright, hi, this is Brian Spain coming to you live, or so I decided to, on the YouTube. Um, that's my channel. Where to Pave? Why? Because today's vlog is very, very serious. So, I need to put on my serious hat so you know I'm not kidding around. Also wearing my East Carolina shirt because Linville Joseph got shot, and Pirates supporting some pirates. Give well soon, Linville. Um, love you, Linville. Anyway, this week's vlog, uh, is about the Facebook Messenger Terms of Service that people are freaking out over the permissions. Um, you shouldn't freak out. And if you read the permissions on a lot of your apps, they're a lot scarier than Facebook's because Facebook's actually using these things. Um, the A lot of other apps request these things and you're like, why would you need that? And they don't. Um, always download your apps from the app market, like the official ones. Don't go to second party sites. Like, the best ones for um, for Android are, well at least in my opinion, are Amazon App Market and Google Play. Um, you may still find some viruses here and there, but usually they're a lot better. If you go to any website to download an app, you could get malicious code and they may put requests into the app that you don't even know about. Um, so let's get started. Facebook Messenger. The app has access to your identity. And that, it kind of needs to know who you are in order to connect the calls um, and the messages because the main reason people probably use Messenger is to write people back and forth. Um, I use it mostly for phone calls. I mean, I still write people. Uh, it's really great, especially if you're on Wi-Fi. It's free to make phone calls to any other Facebook user that has the app. When I was in Europe, I used it for almost everyone I called because you can use Viber, you can use Line, but um, I was on 3G service and for some reason, Facebook just sounded a lot clearer and was a better, even with the slower data, it worked better than the other apps. That's why I used it. Um, I've been using it for, ever since it came out, I was like in the beta and I've always enjoyed it. Um, it's got to be able to read your contacts. Okay, how is it going to contact other users if it can't read them to know they're there? Without this feature, each time you would actually have to know the individual user's um, account name or whatever in order to find them. Like, it's, you know, it's, yes, it could read your contacts in your phone, but it's searching those contacts to see if they have the Messenger app. So that way they know whether they can use it or not. Again, I'm not with Facebook. I'm just telling you what, in my terms of being a former phone hacker, um, which only hacked my phone, which it was legal at the time. And it's legal again. You can unlock them and hack them again. Yay, thanks, Obama. Um... Somebody should make a video called, Thanks Obama! She did, and it's brilliant. You should watch it. I can't remember her name. Just Google it. Okay, so your location. Um, a lot of times with locations, uh, location-based apps, not just with this one, it's for a couple things. Um, sometimes for advertisements, it's, if it's giving you specific areas of where you're going to be, um, you get ads tailored to that. Also, you can use it for things as, um, like for Google, like how can they put the little arrow on the map for you to let you know where you're at if it doesn't have access to know where you're at. Um, same thing with Facebook Messenger. Um, like for that, it needs to be able to try and wait to do the call. Um, SMS. I haven't actually used the messaging feature because Android with their update, I think two updates ago, now you can't use multiple SMS apps. It only lets you choose one. I haven't used that feature, but if you're going to use it for your text messenger, it needs to be able to do that. Phone. Directly phone, uh, directly call phone numbers. Read call it. This is when people like, it can call people without you knowing. Ha <laughs> ha No, it can call people with you knowing because it has a little phone button that you initiate the call. Um, and again, I think that's with the way Android words things about how things can be done. Um, but yeah, it's got to be able to read your call list. Uh, and it's got to be able, if you want to call people, it has to have the function to directly call phone numbers. Um, which again, I use and I love. Photos, media files, it needs to test access to protected storage and to modify or delete the contents of your USB storage. Okay, for that, you are using the phone to take pictures. Well, you, not all people might do that, but you can take pictures and remove pictures from um, the app, like when you're using the app. So it needs to be able to do that or else when you want to send someone a picture of the food you're getting ready to eat, oh, look, look, I'm getting ready to eat. This is so good. You couldn't do it. So, that's kind of important. Um, Wi-Fi connection information. A few Wi-Fi connections. With that one, I, I've never really... 
100% understood why it needs to know everything that's connected to your Wi-Fi router, but it's a very common thing if you read a lot of um, a lot of the apps that use Wi-Fi. That's on there. Dev device ID and call information. Read phone status and identify. Yeah, it's going to need that. Um, it has to know, like, it has to know what your phone is in order for it to use your phone to do things to other phones. Um, which I know it sounds silly and it sounds scary, but if it doesn't know the state your phone is in and what your phone is and all that stuff, then it can't do what it's designed to do. Others receive data from the internet. That's when you get a new message. Download files without notification when it updates itself. Or um, if I'm sending you a picture and it's going to put the picture like into the chat, without that, it'd say, um, you'd have to say, hey, Brian sent you a picture. Do you want do you want me to download this now? Or even technically if I send you a text since it's going over the thing, if we're chatting, it would have to ask you each time, is it okay to receive a message from Brian? Yes. Think how long the conversations would go. Um, run at startup. That just means it's a background process that every time you turn on your phone, it's gonna be like it starts itself. Um, that's so if someone contacts you, you know without you having to go into the app. Prevent device from sleeping. So tell me how like, it'd be bad if you call someone and you're in the middle of a phone call and it goes to sleep. You know, like, it has to be able to do that. Uh, view network connections. It needs to know what the connections are so that it can connect. Um, install shortcuts. Uh, so a lot of people like myself have the shortcut on the home screen. So if you couldn't do that, you'd have to go into your apps, slide, 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 click the messenger each time you want to open it. Um, change your audio settings. I'm sure that this has to do something with the uh, recording the voice um, or being able to chat on the phone. I'm actually am not too sure about that. Uh, read the Google service configuration. That's just a Google service pack that things on Android really won't run well if they can't read what Google's got going on. Um, draw over other apps. It's just like it means that you can make this take precedence over other things. Like when you have that chat bubble head here, and say you're playing a game, um, what, what's the game all you kids play? Angry Birds. I was going to say Wacky Birds. It's Angry Birds, right? Do you still play that? So with this, the little chat bubble goes on top of that. And so you can still be playing your Angry Birds, but you can hit chat bubble, type, hit it again, it goes back, keep playing Angry Birds, and you don't have to stop. Without that, every time you got a message, you'd have to exit the app, go to Facebook, read it, go back to your app. It's a pain, right? Like Facebook's actually, actually doing you a favor. Uh, full network access, again, so it works. Um, read sync settings, yes. Control vibration, yes. Um, and change network con connectivity. Like all those things, I think you get, they all play into the fact that you're using this as a communication tool. And for the people that's freaking out, and this is serious, so I probably should have to take off my yellow pave, because this is super serious, go to the natural pave. Okay. So serious, 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 serious here. If you're afraid of an app being able to read your phone state, to use your microphone, to take pictures without your knowledge, like, these aren't the apps that's going to do that. The apps that will do that maliciously, maliciously, yeah, I almost said maliciously, sorry, I'm a little redneck, but the apps that want to do that will do it without you ever knowing. It won't be listed in the permissions, and they'll find ways around it. Um, those are the apps on those third-party sites um, that you shouldn't go to if you download from a website. It may give, because Google's not controlling those, um, and they can do that. And I tell people, if you ever want to be 100% sure that no one's listening in on your phone, and that no one's using your camera without your knowledge, even if you have it turned off, those things can still be done. You have to take the battery out. It's the only way to be 100% sure that no one's doing that. So this is just me telling you about the terms of service. Again, I don't work for Facebook, I don't work for Android, I'm just a phone nerd that has a lot of time on his hands, and I wanted to make this video for people. I know it's a little bit long, but I mean, I didn't want to skip any of this stuff. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. Um, make sure to subscribe, because everything's different. Oh, I got my camera back! Yes! Like my real camera. So I'm going to start shooting things again. Um, I'm so excited. A little disappointed yesterday, HuffPost did one of my videos, like my next video that I had scheduled to shoot. HuffPost put it up yesterday, and it's really funny. 
It's about um, what guys really mean when they're screaming at girls on the street doing uh, street harassment. And I was really hurt by it, but it lets me know it's a brilliant idea that HuffPost did it. Um, I might put a link to their video, even though it's not mine, just because like it's almost verbatim my video. So, good job, HuffPost. You're smart. But anyway, subscribe, leave comments, let me know what you think. Um, and don't be afraid to Google things. Like, there are a lot of websites out there that can explain permissions better than I just did. But I figure a lot of people, instead of having them explained like by reading it, they, they're like me. I'm a verbal learner that when I hear it, it makes more sense. So thanks for your time. Brian Spain. So I decided to explain permissions.